Okay. What about the tongue developing? You told some foramen cecum and all that. Yes, that is to be discussed now. But I got a question for you. What is it? It is asking the tongue development all except. Wrong question. Why? Because it has no answer. But still, we have to give one answer. Which one will you give? I think uh, second arch. Why? Because it has minimal contribution. Correct. Because second arch has minimal contribution. That is the answer. Otherwise, all of them are contributing. So, what about tubercle in par then? What is this uh, hypobrinkle eminence? What is this lingual swelling? That we will discuss. But keep your answer as second arch because it has minimal contribution to the developing tongue. Then what about this diagram? This diagram will use to discuss the developing tongue. This is pharynx. So this is the pharynx where the tongue is developing. Yes, at a start now. This is the two lingual swellings at the pharynx in the first pharyngeal arch. Along with that, there is one tuberculum impar in the midline. So this tuberculum impar in the midline is also from the first pharyngeal arch. Yes, in the region of first pharyngeal arch, they will form anterior two-third of tongue. So anterior two-third of tongue will develop in the first pharyngeal arch, that orange color. Yes, that orange color is first arch, giving two lingual swelling, one tubercular impar, and the anterior two-third of tongue. If you say this is the anterior two-third of tongue, fine. What about the second arch? Second arch is shown in blue color and it will disappear from the tongue. It has minimal contribution to the tongue. And as the second arch is disappearing from the tongue, it will disappear at what is called as the foramen cecum. It will be at the foramen cecum. Here, here, here. This is foramen cecum? Yes. That is where the second arch will disappear? Yes. You mean to say second arch do not contribute to the tongue? At a greater level? No. It will disappear at foramen cecum. So it is a third arch which is yellow color here. It is a third arch which is yellow color is contributing to posterior one third of tongue. Posterior one third of tongue. Posterior one third of tongue is coming from the third arch. What about the fourth arch? Fourth arch, you remember epiglottis? It will form epiglottis. And not only it will form the epiglottis, not only it will form the epiglottis, it will also form the posterior most tongue. Posterior most tongue. So you're telling that this uh, fourth pharyngeal arch will form epiglottis. Yes, not only epiglottis, but it will also form posterior most tongue. Now let us draw a diagram for the same. We'll also draw the diagram for the tongue development. Yes. Okay. What do you want to show there? Some nerve supply also. Nerve supply? Yes. Okay, then let's do it. Again, this is the floor of the pharynx and lined by lined by the endoderm. And uh, what is happening to that endoderm? Actually, you have to look at the floor of pharynx and telling this is the tongue developing. If this is the tongue developing, then uh, I found that there is a sulcus terminalis here. Yes, that is the sulcus terminalis embryologically. And that is the one which is separating anterior two-third of the tongue from the posterior one third of tongue. So you are telling that this is tongue developing in the floor of pharynx and there is a sulcus terminalis which is separating anterior two third of tongue from the posterior one third of tongue. Yes, and that is where we have the foramen cecum. And uh, that foramen cecum is having some endoderm. And that endoderm and the foramen cecum will form the thyroglossal duct. And that thyroglossal duct will form the thyroid gland. If you remember, we have discussed that earlier, that at the floor of pharynx, there is some endoderm of the foramen cecum forming the thyroglossal duct, forming thyroid gland. But the question is, they're asking, thyroid gland develop at the junction of which arch? Thyroid gland develop at the junction of which arch? What do you think? Which arch? Junction. If you remember, anterior two-third of tongue will develop in first arch and posterior one-third develop in third arch. Then where is second arch? If you are telling, anterior two-third of tongue develop in first arch and the posterior one-third develop in third arch, then where is second arch? Second arch would have disappeared at the foramen cecum. So if you tell second arch will disappear at the foramen cecum having minimal contribution to tongue, then I got the answer. The question was, where is thyroid gland developing? And your answer is junction of the arch number 1 and 3. 
1 and 3. Question is, where is thyroid gland developing at the junction of? And your answer is, thyroid gland developed at the junction of first and third arch. First and third arch. And what is the fourth arch doing? Fourth arch, yes. It will form the posterior most tongue. Posterior most tongue. Not only the fourth arch will form posterior most tongue, but it will also form epiglottis. So, fourth arch will form the posterior most tongue and also form the epiglottis. Yes. Can you tell me what is the nerve of fourth arch? Nerve of fourth arch, I know, branch of vagus. Yeah, which branch of vagus is the nerve of fourth arch? That is superior laryngeal nerve, supplying epiglottis. And superior laryngeal nerve, which is branch of the vagus, nerve, nerve of the fourth arch, not only supply epiglottis, it will also supply posterior most tongue. So, posterior most tongue and epiglottis have same nerve supply. Yes. Posterior most tongue and the epiglottis has the branch of the vagus superior laryngeal nerve nerve of the fourth arch what is the nerve of third arch it is the glossopharyngeal what is glossopharyngeal supplying glossopharyngeal nerve nerve of the third arch will obviously supply glossopharyngeal nerve nerve of the third arch will obviously supply posterior one third of the tongue not only it will supply posterior one third of the tongue but it is also supplying the circumvallate papilla what is this circum Valate papilla. What about the circumvallate papilla? What about that? Actually, you have to understand that circumvallate papilla embryologically develop in the posterior one third, but later they migrate anterior to sulcus terminalis. What is that? The circumvallate papilla, they embryologically develop in the posterior one third of tongue, but later they migrate anteriorly. But as they are migrating anteriorly, they will carry a branch of the glossopharyngeal nerve. This you remember. Remember that the branch of the glossopharyngeal nerve follows the circumvallate papilla anterior. Otherwise, they have migrated anterior to sulcus terminalis. So, you are telling that circumvallate papilla which are despite the fact presenting in the anterior tooth of tongue are supplied by the glossopharyngeal nerve branch? Yes. Otherwise, remember, anterior tooth of tongue will be supplied by what? Now, of the first arch, who is that? Now, the first arch is the mandibular nerve branch of trigeminal carrying the journal sensation from the anterior tooth of tongue. If you say anterior two third of tongue, that the nerve is first arch nerve, that is the third branch of the fifth nerve. What is the third branch of the fifth nerve? Mandibular nerve, branch of trigeminal carrying the journal sensation. Then who will carry the taste sensation? The pre-traumatic nerve. And who is the pre-traumatic nerve for first arch? Carrying taste sensation. That was the cauda tympani nerve. Cauda tympani nerve, which is the pre-traumatic nerve for the first arch, carry the taste sensation from the anterior tooth of tongue. So, you are telling that taste sensation of anterior tooth of tongue will be carried by the pre-traumatic nerve, which is a branch of facial nerve. Yes, branch of facial nerve. Cauda tympani nerve in the first arch, carrying the taste sensation. Otherwise, journal sensation carried by mandibular nerve, branch of trigeminal nerve. For example, you were drinking hot coffee, you burn the tip of the tongue. Which nerve will tell you have burned the tip of tongue? Hot coffee burning the tip of tongue. Which nerve tells you tip of tongue is burnt? Burning sensation. Mandibular nerve, branch of trigeminal. And then you realize that there is no sugar in the coffee. Which nerve is telling that? Sugar in the coffee, then it will be called a temporary nerve. And what if the coffee has reached the circumvallate papilla? If the coffee has reached the circumvallate papilla, who will tell you the burning sensation as well as taste sensation? Same nerve. Same nerve carrying the taste sensation, burning sensation, glossophangel nerve. And what if the coffee has reached the Posterior most tongue and epiglottis. If the coffee has reached the posterior most tongue and epiglottis, then epiglottis taste as well as burning sensation of the tongue is carried by branch of vagus, which is superior laryngeal nerve. You mean the superior laryngeal nerve is carrying the journal sensation as well as taste sensation of posterior most tongue and epiglottis? Yes, that you remember. Now, understand tongue. In the beginning, epithelium is endodermal. So, tongue in the beginning, epithelium is endodermal? Yes. What happens later? Later, you will find tongue is growing outside, outside, outside. You know the rule? 
what what rule the rule is any external opening is lined by any external opening is lined by surface ectoderm so as the tongue is growing outside anterior two third of tongue epithelium is changing into surface ectoderm now you are trying to say in the beginning tongue epithelium is endodermal yeah because tongue developed at the floor of pharynx the tongue epithelium was endodermal in the beginning later later tongue is going outside 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 so anything which is outside is lined by surface ectoderm so what happens later is anterior two third of the tongue epithelium is surface ectoderm and the deeper epithelium is still endodermal if you say the deeper epithelium is still endodermal and the anterior epithelium is ectodermal, then I think I will have a endoderm ectoderm junction at the sulcus terminalis. Correct. At the sulcus terminalis, you have the endoderm ectoderm junction. And tongue is developing from three germ layers. How the tongue is developing from three germ layers? Just now you saw some part of epithelium endodermal, but the tongue itself is from mesoderm. What is tongue? some connective tissue and muscles from mesoderm when you say some epithelium is from the ectoderm and some epithelium is from the endoderm and the tongue is basically mesoderm because tongue is connective tissue and muscles you know where the tongue muscles come from occipital somites if you say tongue muscles come from occipital somites i think tongue muscles do not develop in the pharyngeal arches no eyeball and tongue muscle do not develop in pharyngeal arches eyeball and tongue muscles do not develop in pharyngeal arches then where is the eyeball muscle developing from pre otic myotomes pre Ortic myotomes in front of ear, in front of ear, pre ortic myotomes. Then, where is the tongue muscle coming from? Post ortic myotomes, post ortic myotomes. What is post ortic myotomes? What is ortic? Ear. So, you're telling eyeball muscles come from pre ortic myotomes, yes. And the tongue muscle comes from post ortic myotomes, occipital myotomes, yes, occipital myotomes, post ortic myotomes. Okay. If you say tongue muscles come from post ortic, ortic means ear, post ortic, then what is the pharyngeal arches doing? Because you told tongue is developing pharyngeal arches. Yeah, I told you tongue is developing pharyngeal arches, but pharyngeal arches give you only the connective tissue, not the muscles. It give only the connective tissue, not the muscles. You mean to say arch number one, arch number two, three, four, they will just give the connective tissue of tongue, not the muscles? No. Tongue muscles do not develop in the pharyngeal arches. Okay. Then where they came from? They came from occipital somite, post ortic myotomes. So tongue has all the three germ layer, mesoderm, ectoderm, endoderm. Yes, that you remember. Now look at this diagram for nerve supply. Understand? Almost all the muscles of the tongue are supplied by 12th nerve except one, which is palatoglossus. Actually, it is a muscle of palate also so supplied by nerve of the palate which is developing in the fourth arch so superior laryngeal nerve maybe but remember almost all the tongue muscles are supplied by 12th nerve except one tongue muscle which is palatoglossus which is actually a muscle of palate also developing in fourth arch so nerve of the fourth arch may be superior laryngeal nerve actually it is called as vagus accessory complex you remember remember i told you fourth arch and sixth arch will have vagus accessory complex so vagus accessory complex supply the muscles of palate pharynx larynx yes so this is a muscle of palate yes it is a muscle of palate and tongue so it is supplied by some vagus accessory complex 10th nerve and 11th nerve not the 12th nerve no 12th nerve supply all tongue muscles but this is by vagus accessory complex then what about the sensation sensations you know Lingual nerve is a branch of mandibular nerve carrying general sensation anterior two third of tongue, anterior two third of tongue, anterior two third of tongue. The general sensations are carried by lingual nerve, branch of mandibular nerve, branch of trigeminal. But if you are talking about the posture one third, 
then you will find that there is glossopharyngeal nerve, glossopharyngeal nerve, even the circumvallate papilla, glossopharyngeal nerve. This is circumvallate papilla, you know, this is circumvallate papilla. So that is circumvallate papilla, yes. And that is the glossopharyngeal nerve, yes. Then what is the posterior one third? Of course, posterior one third is glossopharyngeal nerve, but this area, posterior most tongue is internal laryngeal nerve branch of superior laryngeal nerve branch of the vagus nerve. What is that? Posterior most tongue and epiglottis. Posterior most tongue and epiglottis. So posterior most tongue and epiglottis is, uh, this is epiglottis? Yeah, that is epiglottis. So this epiglottis and posterior most tongue, who is supplying? Internal laryngeal nerve, branch of superior laryngeal nerve, branch of vagus nerve. So all that you have to remember. Let us look at a question also. This question is asking, taste pathway from circumvallate papilla. So what is your answer? They are in front of the sulcus terminalis. Now maybe, circumvallate papilla are in front of sulcus terminalis, but they carry the nerve from posterior side. So, so what is the answer? Okay, if you say this is the answer, fine. Can you tell me one thing? What? That is the answer, of course, circumvallate papilla is glossopharyngeal nerve, nerve of the third arch. Which nerve or with this cauda tympani carry taste from where? Cauda tympani, anterior to third tongue. Okay, anterior to third tongue, right. Where is greater petrosal nerve carrying taste from? One of the AIMS question. The greater petrosal, yes. From the palate, yes, from the palate. Taste of the palate is carried by greater petrosal nerve. Can you tell me where the superior laryngeal nerve carrying the taste from? Superior laryngeal nerve actually gave a branch. Which one? Internal laryngeal nerve. So, carry taste from epiglottis. And not only epiglottis, but also posterior most tongue. Posterior most tongue. So, this is a superior laryngeal nerve, which will give you some internal laryngeal nerve, which will carry the taste of epiglottis and also posthumous tongue. By the way, what is the answer? Answer is whatever you told, lingual branch of the glossopharyngeal nerve.